untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white angel life gain deck, but it has a twist. We're also playing four copies of The Book of Exalted Deeds, a three-mana legendary artifact. It says at the beginning of your end step, if you gained three or more life this turn, create a 3-3 three, three white angel creature token with flying. So it's sort of similar to Resplendent Angel, just a bit smaller. And then we can also pay triple white, tap and exile the book, and put an enlightened counter on target angel. It gains you you cannot lose the game and your opponents cannot win the game, so a reference to Platinum Angel can only be used at sorcery speed. Now the combo with the Book of Exalted Deeds is to animate a Mutavolt, which is a creature land that has all creature types including Angel, so it's a legal target for Book of Exalted Deeds, we'll exile it, target or Mutavolt, put an enlightened counter on it, and for as long as we control Mutavolt we cannot lose the game and the opponent cannot win the game. Of course we're not going to activate Mutavolt to attack with it and potentially expose it to opposing removal spells, instead we're gonna keep it nice and safe in our mana base, and unless the opponent has a land destruction spell, or maybe a way to steal one of our permanents with cards like Agent of Treachery, we should be safe, and then we can just keep passing the turn until the opponent maybe draws from an empty library if we don't feel like killing them with damage, and we'll still win the game. So that's the combo that this deck is capable of, and Mutavolt is still just a nice creature land to have access to in the grindier matchups, counting as an angel means it can potentially increase the number of counters that Jada provides, so we can maybe activate it before playing an Angel if we have enough mana for it. Jada, of course, another all-star in the Angels list, that's a pretty recent addition. At two mana we also have Youthful Valkyrie, which can grow over time. Bishop of Wings as a great source of a life gain, and that combos quite nicely with Resplendent Angel, which can maybe make additional Angel tokens end of turn if we gained five or more life. Also has a nice mana sink ability for six mana. And then Righteous Valkyrie is another great source of life gain, especially when paired with Janna, as we'll get larger angels gaining more life. And then I'm also playing four copies of Inspiring Overseer to maximize the number of card draw effects in the deck to help assemble the book plus Mutavolt combo. Also gains one life, which can be helpful in maybe assembling a five life for Resplendent Angel. And then we have a tiny bit of interaction with two copies of Skyclave Apparition to potentially exile opposing non-land permanents. And then of course we're a collected company deck, the only reason to splash a green in this deck to potentially hit two angels at once, and that will help in assembling our various life gain synergies to take over the board. So some games will just win by curving out with angels and topping off with a collected company, some games we may be able to just win with book plus Mutavolt if we manage to find both, and of course our opponent cannot have any instant speed removal at the ready to destroy Mutavolt in response, because that's one way they can potentially disrupt our combo. And then the mana base needs a ton of white sources so we can cast the triple white book and the double white bishop of wings, so all the green sources also produce white mana. Could also be playing with a new Kalos Reconstruction, which is similar to Collected Company, can also find artifacts, so it could hit our Book of Exalted Deeds. The problem of course is that it's a sorcery and it costs more mana to put the same number of permanents in play, so it's decidedly worse than Collected Company. And the more instants and sorceries we add to the deck, the worse Collected Company becomes, as we'll have fewer creatures to put in play, so it's a bit of a balancing act, but definitely a card worth considering. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Obosh as companion, so it could be another aggressive red deck, and my hand seems fine for that matchup. Turn 1 Swiss Spear, so unlikely that Jada survives, but then we have turn 3 Righteous Valkyrie as maybe a nice way to stabilize. Book just missing a Mutavolt. They didn't have an instant end of turn at least. But we could see one now. Wizard's Lightning for 3 mana. Swiss Spear, just a human monk and not a wizard. Okay, let's uh, try Valkyrie or we could try an Apparition first. And then wait on Valkyrie until we can maybe gain life right away. Yeah, I think I still go for Valkyrie first. Opponent didn't seem to have any 1 or 2 mana instants. And another Whistle's Lightning is not enough to kill Valkyrie here. Desert down to 15. And a light up the stage. Nice synergy with the Desert here to enable Spectacle. So we'll take it. Opponent could still play Chandra and then aim the Skewer upstairs. 
And then Skyclave may go after Chandra here. Alright, so we're taking a serious hit. And we haven't found any angels yet. So we could attack with Valkyrie if we're not going to block with it. Exile Chandra. And then hope to find a Mutavolt soon. Or at least some angels to gain life with. Another desert down to eight. And a cure. So I'm probably forced to chum block the Swift Spear here, otherwise we're likely dying to a burn spell. Alright, Resplendent Angel was a good draw. So play that. And then we'll hang back with Valkyrie. And then next turn I can just activate Resplendent Angel to maybe take over the game by itself. Alright, never mind. Wizard's Lightning. Opponent's got one card left. Sends in the team. Yeah, it feels bad to block and lose Valkyrie, especially since we're not taking out the opposing creature. Opponent can put Obosh in hand, next turn cast it, which will uh, increase the damage output from Swiss Spear. And they can still put Obosh in hand besides potentially playing a burn spell. So if I'm blocking, I might as well block the 3-3 three, three here. And then, what are my outs? Let's say our opponent does put a Bosch in hand, plays it next turn. I'm not necessarily dead yet, so I can maybe still top deck a Mutavolt. Alright, there goes a Bosch. Overseer the draw. Okay, so we're still in it. And so let's play Overseer first and see what we pick up. Another Overseer. That works. Give us a nice board presence. Gain some more life back. And then I may be able to attack now, although I don't think we're in a rush either. So next turn book plus Valkyrie. If we gain three, we'll make another angel token end of turn. And Kumano now deals additional damage with a Bosch in play. Okay, so can double block Swift Spear perhaps. Or just take it, which would be 4 damage, which is probably still manageable. And then Book plus Valkyrie. And that's going to gain us a ton of life here. At some point we could sacrifice Book just on an Angel, but of course our opponent can find some burn spells to take out our creature. So Mutavolt would be the safer target. And our opponent just sends in the team. So let's say we block Swiss Spear and then try to take out Obosh. I could triple block, keep Valkyrie alive, which is important with our Book. An instant speed burn spell here could hurt, but our opponent cannot be playing with lightning strike, so that reduces the number of uh, instants they can have here. Alright, our opponent just activates Ramana Prunes. think we'll just uh, pass it back once again. Have to watch out with all these Ramana runes and other deserts they can sacrifice. Opponent finds a play with fire, can go upstairs. And our opponent attacks. 3-3 three, three on 2-2, two, two, forces to play with fire. And then I guess I chum the 3-3 three, three, and then I'll finish off my token. Don't have a great way to pressure Chandra. So what if instead we just double trade? That may be for the best. And then still hoping for a Mutavolt. Or another big angel here. 
play with fire goes upstairs. Another book. Alright, I guess we're sacrificing the first one. And then our opponent will need to find several burn spells to take out Valkyrie. So this may buy us some time. Kumano is fine, doesn't deal damage to our creatures. And a Lava Runner. Okay, so we're dead on board. If it weren't for our uh, counter from Book. So now we just need to limit the card advantage that Chandra provides. And I could sacrifice another Book here. To put on the second Valkyrie, make it really difficult for opponent to kill both of them. But I think we just pass here, get another token end of turn, gain six more life. And then we should be safe. This is a fun idea. And our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hands has potential. Play tapped Grove on one. Turn two, Jada. And turn three, we could play a book already. Opponent also an angel, a life gain deck, presumably. Okay, so what are the priorities? If we get the book combo on Mutavolt, they probably don't have a way to interact. Okay, so we could attack with Jada since we can use Iganjo if they block. Opponent takes it, and then we'll just play a tapped Grove to set up company while keeping up Iganjo, I think. That makes sense. Although I could just tap out for Book, and then next turn just play Iganjo to set up company. Sure. I am giving them a chance to maybe use a Skyclave to exile our Book. Just a Resplendent Angel. Okay, and then I guess it's in our best interest to main phase Collected Company, so we can enable Book, as opposed to just playing a youthful Valkyrie here. And found Jada and Resplendent, so not the best pair. But we'll keep larger Jada, and we can try again next turn. Hopefully finding some uh, Bishops of Wings or... A righteous Valkyrie. Opponent attacks with their resplendence. I'll take it. And if our opponent has a company, they can maybe set it up end of turn. There's a Mutavolt. Okay, so is that lights out? Potentially. And Skyclave Apparition is a non-land permanent, so that cannot exile our Mutavolt. So I don't think there's a way for them to really mess this up. And then once we have counter Mutavolt, Unless our opponent does the same and forces a draw, we should be fine. Okay, and then we can still uh, play Valkyrie, not gonna attack into a company. Okay, I guess our opponent didn't have anything. Maybe their own Iganjo, who knows. A reconstruction. I've seen this in a few lists as well as an extra collected company for the Angels deck. But yeah, how does our opponent beat this Mutavolt? We're never gonna activate it. So it doesn't matter how much damage they deal or how much life they gain. Find a Resplendence. So our opponent's gonna quickly outsize our board. But uh, yeah, this is pretty annoying for most decks to handle and I don't know if our opponent has a way around it so unless let's see a Johnny doesn't get rid of our lands so I don't think that makes a difference they really need their own Mutavolt plus Book of Exalted Deeds speaker activates that's all fine so now we need to play towards finding an answer for the opponent's book.
probably no point in playing bishop. Valkyrie, that's fine. From the looks of it, our opponent's not playing with Mutavolt. See a lot of basic lands. Speaker makes a token. So yeah, opponent could easily get up to a thousand life here. But if they cannot get rid of Mutavolt, they're gonna draw from an empty library and still lose the game. Okay, opponent draws their final card, plays another bishop, and in the meantime they're up to 44,250 life, and we're at minus 23,715. It's a bit of a life total discrepancy, you could say. You can almost keep track of how many angels the opponent has by counting the plus one counters from Jada, although there's a couple triggers in the way here. So yeah, we have over 180 angel tokens in play. Opponent's gonna attack one last time. No blocks. Will our negative life total exceed our opponent's positive life total? Not quite. Do we get to take our final non-existent draw step? Gotta wait for some triggers to resolve. A nice 200, 200 angel token with 188 Plus one plus one counters on it, as you do. Ha! <laughs> 
Okay, opponent reached 50,000 life on the nose. That's kind of beautiful. Don't ruin it, opponent. End of turn collected company with an empty library. Luckily, it doesn't do much. There's another one. And another one. No attacks. GG's. And our opponent explodes. Okay, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems keepable. Bishop into double overseer. Up against mono blue spirits, it seems. Okay, so being on the play is a big deal. And then Overseer is not banned. It's sort of a must counter while not being the highest impact card. And then we can try and sneak a company into play, although Wanderer can also counter it, so... Opponent goes drawing with combat research. So hopefully they don't have the one mana counter spell here. Skyclave is tempting. I think I should still bait with Overseer in case they do have the one mana counter of the control spirit and enchantment. And there it is, Sky Slide Snare. Okay, might as well attack for one. And then next turn we could try a Sky Clave, we'll see. Opponent draws. And a Supreme Phantom. Plus Ascendant Spirit. Okay, so our opponent stepped out. We cannot resolve company because of Wanderer, but we can exile it with Apparition, which may be the best course of action here. Play this tapped and pass. Sun Spirit could still be a threat long term. But uh, yeah, given that our opponent didn't keep up a counter spell last turn, they probably just have a bunch of creatures in hand. And block spirits, take two. And then we gotta try and take over with Collected Company now that we can resolve it. Although another bishop into Resplendent Angel is probably pretty good too. Although we could just go for Collected Company, which may have higher upside here if it hits a couple nice three drops. And there we go, Resplendence. Plus, probably youthful, so that we gain enough life to enable Resplendent Angel. And this is potentially already too much for Mono Blue to overcome. Shackle guys can maybe tap some flyers down, and they can level up Ascendant Spirit, but the yeah, opponent's gonna fall behind too quickly. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's missing both Mutavolt and maybe a third land, but I'll try it. Jada into Overseer, if it survives. And then now we've got the third lands to cast Overseer. Opponent's black-white. Make that Absan, and looks like a Grease Fang deck. So this matchup's typically about just building up a large army of flyers to block Parhelion, although Maybe it's not a Grease Fang deck and it's just a Graveyard Sacrifice deck instead. So yeah, hopefully Jada survives. Priests. Something we may want to get rid of with Skyclave. And a Shambling Ghast. Yeah, let's get rid of the Priest here. Attack for two. And then next turn I can double spell Bishop plus Overseer if I'd like. Cutthroat, so opponent making good use of the new cards from the Anthology. Cutthroat and Wayfinder. And Urborg Lurgoif as well, so pretty sweet Graveyard Synergy deck. Now we can go Bishop plus Righteous Valkyrie, that seems good. Attack for two first. Opponent's down to ten. 
and the next turn Collected Company could be the final nail, but we'll see how they respond. They have some white mana in there, potentially for something like a Rally the Ancestors to bring creatures back out of the graveyard. And yeah, there it is, X equals 3. They've got a Sacrifice Outlet in Woestrider so they can sacrifice creatures before they get exiled by Rally's ability. And Stitcher Supplier can mill a couple more cards, see a Cruel Celebrant, and all the while Cutthroat drains us as the opponent sacrifices more creatures. So we'll see if our opponent can make a dent in our life total. Also have to watch out for Shambling Gas, maybe giving a creature minus one, minus one. So blocking may be tricky. Lurgoyf attacks. Yeah, that I can probably take, even though chumping with Skyclave is reasonable. Opponent's gonna try and deal as much damage on the way out as possible. Oestrider cannot sacrifice itself. So that's gonna get exiled end of turn. Take 7 down to 12. And that's it. Okay, time for company, I guess. And find Resplendent plus Skyclave. Can exile Lurgoyf, opponent can sacrifice in response. And that's going to be enough for a concession. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand has potential. Overseer to hit our land drops and then double company as we're up against yet another red deck. Is this opponent perhaps packing Rampaging Frosodon? I'll play Valkyrie over Jada, try and keep our Font of Hope alive. Opponent still has a Lightning Strike anyway. Next turn Overseer, and then we've got Company at the ready. There's our Mutavolt, in case we find our book. Spikefield exiles Overseer. And we'll pass with Company at the ready. And then next turn maybe Jada plus Skyclave. Stomp down to 11. So we need a good company here, or we could be dead. Opponent attacks. Yeah, it may be worth it to try and block here by going for a company. Although, of course, our opponent could potentially interact if they have some more burn spells in hand. So we could also see taking it and then forcing the opponent to tap out for Bone Crusher and then hopefully getting a good company hit to attack back. Chandra pluses for mana. Can ultimate at minus seven. Warning shot. And there's a company. Could have been better. But still get to gain four. And then now, do we go Jada plus Skyclave to exile Chandra? Or do we take a different approach? Having Jada in play might be worth it. And then Skyclave exiles Chandra. Or we can just play another youthful Valkyrie. Alright, opponent had a play with fire left. Let's exile Chandra just to be safe. Pass it back. And then next turn Valkyrie plus company. 
opponent's running low here, one card left. It's gonna be a lightning strike, making a 3-3 illusion. And Bone Crusher can attack. I'll take it since Bishop is more valuable. And then now Valkyrie probably before Company. And I'll cast a Company now in case we find Resplendent Angel so we can immediately make a token. And yeah, there's Resplendent Angel plus maybe a Righteous Valkyrie at this stage. And that should do it. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems fine. Double bishop. Can maybe generate some angels alongside book. Even if we don't have Mutavolt to go with it. And this could be a mirror match. Looks like it. Alright, we both get to start with bishop. And then, uh, yeah, hoping for Mutavolt to go with Book. That's the combo. Resplendent gains four, luckily not five. And there's Mutavolt, so... Yeah, I think I'm down to play Book, and then next turn we can set up our combo. And hopefully our opponent doesn't have answers to it. We have a day Sky Clave, Axel Book, we have a backup. Realmwalker instead. That's pretty neat in an Angel's deck. So they can play Angels off the top. Alright, let's go for it. And we'll see if they have answers. Sarah Paragon, that's fine. And we can soak up two damage. I guess we'll keep playing. And uh, can play double bishop, can play book plus Valkyrie, which triggers book. So we can try and take over the board so we don't have to wait for opponent to go up to 20,000 life. Opponent's got a pair of Valkyries. So Resplendent Angel's gonna trigger end of turn. And there's a collected company. Or do we just go Bishop plus Overseer, guarantee the uh, Book of Exalted Deeds trigger end of turn? There's a Jani, so that can wipe our board. Does not wipe Mutavolt. And we'll get back on the board. Bishop into Collected Company now, maybe. Finding Resplendent and... Kind of like Jada. Let's get another at Jani, fair enough. Well, they're still not getting past our Mutavolt. So we'll see if our opponent finally figures out how Mutavolt works with the Book of Exalted Deeds. As they find a Righteous Valkyrie. Hmm. 
another company. Well, so far no signs of our opponents playing book themselves. Company number three. Find another resplendent. And our opponent explodes. They don't have any answers to the combo, so luckily this one did not last as long. And we get to rank up. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is not spectacular. Although if we find a 3-mana Angel, it may be okay. And if our opponent kills the first Jada, we have a replacement. Looks like a Boros Heroic deck. So that can hit pretty quickly. Something like a Reckless Rage can be very effective at killing our Angels even at 4 toughness. For now, they're not off to the fastest start, but that probably implies they have some good cards in hand. And there's the first Reckless Rage. Well, for now we can just replay Jada. Homestead Courage, so that will amp up the pressure. Take 4. As we draw a third Jada. Legionnaire now into Homestead Courage. So we're gonna take a significant hit, but we should be able to keep Jana here at least. And then we need a good company to stand a chance. So attack for two. And then do I main face company? I think I do, since we might hit Skyclave Apparition and our opponents playing with God's Willing. That's a bad hit, just one Resplendent Angel. Probably not enough to survive here. Jada can jump since we have another one. God's Willing, protection from white, and that should be game. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems promising. Jada into Resplendence, and hopefully find some more life gain cards off the top. Up against the Red Aggro deck. This time without our Bishop Wings. But a backup Jada, probably gonna need it since don't expect the first one to live. And it's going to be a turn 2 Burning Tree, so it could be a pretty explosive start. Into a Phoenix Chick. Could also play Youthful Valkyrie first, since Jada's much easier to kill with a 2 damage burn spell. But I do have a replacement. I think I still run it out first. And then turn 3, Resplendent, turn 4, we can double spell. As your opponent stomps Jada, take 6. So that's adding up quickly. Let's see if they can get past another 3-3 three, three flyer here. Kari's up, okay. So just Burning Tree attacking. I'll take it.
and pass it back. So we've got our defenses set up. And then the goal is to eventually activate Resplendent Angel. Opponent attacks all out. So there could be an Ember Cleave in our future, which would make sense on the Burning Tree Emissary. Let's say I put Janna in front of Phoenix Chick, Resplendent Angel in front of Etching, Valkyrie in front of Burning Tree, then Ember Cleave on Burning Tree would make the most sense, and then they would still trample for three, and we have two favorable trades. Yeah, that seems like the play here. Could also be second main Chain Whirler, but uh, yeah, Ember Cleave made more sense. And even with the Chain Whirler, it wouldn't be a complete disaster, since then we can keep our youthful Valkyrie. They may decide to kill something else, alright. Bonan pumps Phoenix Chick to kill Jada. And the Righteous was a pretty good draw too. Could also hang on to Iganjo. That's another alternative, but I think playing Valkyrie is probably good enough. And line up some blocks. Annex is going to be scary next turn. So probably no attacks for now. So I may have to hang on to Iganjo now to kill Annex after they equip it with Amber Cleave. We'll have to do some math to see if playing Resplendent is maybe better. Well, double Resplendent I'm guessing is good enough. Since we'll get to trigger Valkyrie twice and get a Ton of Angel tokens, end of turn. Just to play it safe, I'll hang back for a turn. But we may be able to gain enough life to pump the team here. I guess not quite 22. But we should have enough power toughness to survive. And then next turn I could pump Resplendent Angel as well. Opponent moves Ember Cleave, so that's 14 points of trample. So I could even just take it if I wanted to, but we can triple block with our tokens and then still kill Annex in the process. And then we should have enough in the air to win here. Okay, so we got to see our green-white life gain angels deck in action. And the combo definitely saved us a few times in the mirror match mostly, which I wasn't expecting. And then we also got matched against quite a few mono red decks, which happened to be one of our best matchups as long as we avoid cards like Rampaging Ferocidon to prevent a life gain. So yeah, overall having a pretty good time in the ranked ladder. So if you're into the Angel life gain deck, you can maybe give the book combo a try. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.